Welcome to worship with the community of Kilrenny Parish Church. We may not be able to worship in a church building at this time, but we can still come together as a worshipping community to give thanks and praise to God. Hopefully this time next week, we will be able to join together in person in Kilrenny and have the pleasure of experiencing communal worship for the first time since Christmas Eve. Assuming the go-ahead is given during the week, I'll be delighted to see those of you able to join us in Kilrenny Church on Sunday morning. Corinne will guide us in all the processes we must follow and how many people can come into the building. So please be patient while that process moves forward. Let us come to worship God. Lord Jesus, you call us to be your people in this place. Give us a sense of your power in our lives, your love in our hearts and your joy in all we do in your name. Join us now as we worship you this day. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is a very meditative hymn, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord, the Holy One is Here. Let us pray. God of all blessings, source of all life, giver of all grace, we thank you for the gift of life, for the breath that sustains life, for the food of this earth that nurtures life, for the love of family and friends, without which there would be no life. We thank you for the mystery of creation, for the beauty that the eye can see, for the joy that the ear may hear, for the unknown 
that we cannot behold, filling the universe with wonder for the expanse of space that draws us beyond the definitions of ourselves. We thank you for setting us in communities, for families who nurture our becoming, for friends who love us by choice, for companions at work who share our burdens and daily tasks, for strangers who welcome us into their midst, for people from other lands who call us to grow in understanding, for children who lighten our moments with delight, for the unborn who offer us hope for the future. We thank you for this day, for life and one more day to love, for opportunity and one more day to work for justice and peace, for neighbours and one more person to love and by whom be loved, for your grace and one more experience of your presence, for your promise to be with us, to be our God and to give salvation. For these and all blessings, we give you thanks, eternal loving God, through Jesus Christ, we pray. And now we join our voices together in the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, beginning at verse 20. John chapter 12, verse 20. Some Greeks were among those who had gone to Jerusalem to worship during the festival. They went to Philip. He was from Bethsaida in Galilee and said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew and the two of them went and told Jesus. Jesus answered, the hour has now come for the Son of Man to receive great glory. I am telling you the truth. A grain of wheat remains no more than a single grain, unless it is dropped into the ground and dies. If it does die, then it produces many grains. Those who love their own life will lose it. Those who hate their own life in this world will keep it for life eternal. Whoever wants to serve me must follow me, so that my servant will be with me where I am, and my father will honour anyone who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Shall I say, Father, do not let this hour come upon me? But that is why I came, so that I might go through this hour of suffering. Father, Bring glory to your name. Then a voice from heaven spoke. I have brought glory to it and I will do so again. The crowd standing there heard the voice and some of them said it was thunder. While others said an angel spoke to him. But Jesus said to them, it is not for my sake this voice spoke, but for yours. Now is the time for this world to be judged. Now the ruler of this world will be overthrown. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. In saying this, he indicated the kind of death he was going to suffer. The crowd answered, Our law tells us that the Messiah will live forever. How then can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Jesus answered, the light will be among you a little longer. Continue on your way while you have the light so that the darkness will not come upon you. For the one who walks in the dark does not know where he is going. Believe in the light then while you have it so that you will be the people of the light. Amen. The word of God for the people 
of God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord. Amen. In today's reading from John's Gospel, we are faced with a number of incidents and ideas that might not seem particularly connected at first. We're introduced to some Greeks, then they disappear as soon as they're mentioned. Jesus seems to speak distractedly of different things, and the voice of God is heard by some in the crowd. On first reading, this is all a little confusing. Has the writer of John's Gospel put different stories together? What's the point being made? In order to get a real sense of what's going on here, we need to transport ourselves back 2,000 years to the temple precincts in Jerusalem. The place is crowded with pilgrims from across the known world, and Jesus has claimed a spot against one of the walls. Forget images of classrooms or lecture theatres. This is teaching in the raw teaching in the streets where you have to shout to be heard, and people are constantly on the move. Some come for the duration to hear everything he has to say. Others will only stop and listen for a few minutes. Some will crave silence to hear every word. Others will offer comment and chat amongst themselves. There'll be shouts, catcalls, the everyday noise of the temple beyond the circle of the devout followers as well as the doubters. Jesus had had many followers when he arrived a few days before this, but he gained many more after clearing the traders and the moneylenders out of the out of the place at the beginning of the week. Since then he'd been teaching those willing to listen to his message that God wants to reclaim his people from the depths of their sin and despair. The Greek travellers make themselves known to Philip and Andrew, no doubt having heard of the, teacher, the teaching of this prophet and wanting to get a special word from him or to hear his teaching more clearly. Then the focus shifts from them back to Jesus as he begins to explain how he must first die before he can return to life and offer hope to the world. The image of the grain being dropped buried before in the ground before bursting into life, is so clear to us who know what he's going to go through. But for those listening to Jesus that day, they could not truly conceive of the pain and the suffering he is about to experience. Jesus ties that image to the need for those who want to follow him to be willing to give up everything to serve him. In this reading, we're given snapshots of what might have been a whole morning or a whole afternoon of teaching by Jesus. We see his mood swing back and forth as he articulates all that he knows will happen in the hours and days ahead. There are times that borders on the confessional. We hear him speak of his fear. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Shall I say, Father, do not let this hour come upon me? But that is why I came, so that I might go through this hour of suffering. Father, bring glory to your name. And then a voice from heaven spoke. I have brought glory to it, and I will do so again. These echo the words. Jesus speaks on the cross, that moment of despair and realisation that no matter what he has to suffer, his father will be with him. And in saying this, these things and hearing God speak to him, we too are reassured that God will be with us in all we go through in his name. Those in the crowd who are familiar with the scriptures, express their surprise at the new teaching Jesus was giving them about what the Messiah would have to endure. 
Jesus answers them with a new interpretation of the teaching of Daniel about the Son of Man. Yes, the Son of Man would come in glory, but first he must suffer at the hands of men before he can return in the light of God's glory. The meaning is so clear to us, listening to these words which have come down to us, and it's difficult for us to imagine the shock and strangeness those who heard Jesus speak that day of these images. We hear these words year after year as part of our recounting of the passion of Jesus during his final days on earth. But for those who followed him, these were new words, new ideas. And they had no idea what was about to happen to him and to them. How could they know? Everything that was happening around them was different, strange, and represented a first time. Nothing could possibly prepare the disciples for what would happen next. Maybe this Easter we have a slightly better sense of that strangeness than we've had before. So much of what we've been through these last 12 months has taught us we really cannot predict the future. Jesus knew what was about to happen to him, and he knows what we are going through. So much of our faith has been packaged up neatly, and we can be accused of taking it for granted. This past year has shown us how much we must work at our faith. We must celebrate the love we receive from God. And we must spread that love beyond the doors of our homes and of our churches. The Jewish people thought they knew what the Messiah would look like when he appeared. But they didn't recognise him in the face of the body of Jesus. Will we be any better at recognising Jesus if he knocked at our door or walked into our church? Just like those first disciples, we too must learn to believe wholeheartedly in his love, learn to walk in his light and learn to lean on his strength if we are going to serve him effectively. We must be willing to go where he leads us, no matter how strange those paths might be. We must be willing to give up everything in order to receive the gift of life. The choice we face is to live in the here and now or to live with Jesus forever in the eternal glory of God's love. Amen and may God add his blessing to these words. Just before we begin, we bring our prayers for the world to God. This week marks a year since the first deaths from COVID-19 in Great Britain. On Tuesday, the 23rd of March, there will be a one minute silence to remember all who have suffered from this virus, those who have lost loved ones, those who have lost their own lives. I hope you will be able to take a moment at midday on Tuesday to remember and feel free to remember now during these prayers for the world. Let us pray. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, hear our prayers. We pray for the whole church, all the people of God, all who respond to the call of Jesus. Follow me. Wash us through and through and cleanse us from our sin. 
We pray for our nation and for all the nations of the earth and for all who govern and judge. Purge us from our sin and we shall be pure. We pray for those who hunger, those who thirst, those who cry out for justice, those who live under the threat of terror and those without a place to lay their head. May they hear of joy and gladness that those who are broken may rejoice. We pray for those who are ill, those in pain, those under stress and those who are lonely. Give them the joy of your saving help and sustain them with your bountiful spirit. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. We pray for those who have been bereaved. Give them your comfort and peace. And now in the silence of our hearts, we bring before you those we know of know in need of your care, your comfort and your compassion. Lord Jesus, you taught us that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. As we prepare our hearts to remember your death and resurrection, grant us the strength and wisdom to serve and follow you this day and always. Amen. Let's close our worship with the hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah.
Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the infinite peace to you. These things we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.